Well, this year I was honoured to be asked by Pilton Pally to come to Glastonbury to show my film Oxide Ghost. It's a sort of a very personal look behind the scenes of a show that I directed in the 90s called Brass Eye. I suppose it's like when you've got your favourite band and you want to buy the sort of studio outtakes of, of an album, you love it. It's like made up of outtakes and unseen bits that I've been sort of squirrelling away in my uh, attic for 25 years. This box has been sort of languishing with me and I've moved house a lot in the last 25 years and I've carted it around and I've lost bits and pieces of it and I, I suppose I was aware that there was some, there probably would be some interesting stuff in it but I hadn't watched it for a very long time and it was only because a guy was doing a TV festival for the 20th anniversary of Brass Eye and he asked me to go and talk at it and I don't normally do that sort of thing but I thought 20 years is is probably long enough to, you know, to, to hold in the, se the secrets of... Uh, brass eye. So I, I, I said to him, oh, well, I've got this box of tapes. Let me have a look through. I'll find you a clip that nobody's ever seen before. That'd be exciting. And so it was just the process of I got all the tapes transferred and then I just sat in an edit and I was just picking clips. That I thought, oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. And the idea was really just to watch them all and pick, oh, that's the one I'll use. But in the end, when I watched it all together, running, running all together, I thought, oh, actually, maybe there's a, a thing. In, maybe it could be a thing. Um, but it had to be a thing that Chris Morris, um, you know, who is the writer and star of, of Brass Eye, was happy about. So, you know, with some sort of trepidation, I sent him the film, and I thought that he would either go, no, don't ever show that, or, yeah, but cut this bit out, and I don't want them to see that bit. But he was brilliantly supportive, actually, and just sort of said, well, I like it, you know, go and do your, to go and go and show it. But even then, I thought it would only be ever seen once. Um, so to be able to sort of get it here to Glastonbury has been great. When I sat down and talked to Chris about it, we both just liked the idea that you'd have to come to a communal sort of place to watch it. And especially if you make TV comedy, you never get to actually see a, a reaction in a room to a thing that was designed to, to have people laughing. So what I've found with this is showing it in a cinema context. People laugh out loud in a cinema because they're with like-minded people, they've come to enjoy it and it's just been great to see real live uh, reactions so that was yeah, it was that and it was it was sort of also a bit about the fact that nowadays you can kind of get everything you can find everything online everything is available all the time everywhere and it just felt really nice to have a, a thing that people came to you know and I think especially at Glastonbury which is to me feels like a more of a sort of communal spirit it's the only I mean I always say to in the introduction of the film sort of what I've just said to you about it being a communal thing but Glastonbury is the only place I've shown it and that sentiment got a cheer from the crowd so I think it, it feels like the, really the right place to be showing it. 2022 is the 25th anniversary I am going to do some more um, michaelcumming.co.uk is my website and that's where I initially list any screenings we've got a couple of um, a couple scheduled in around the end of the Edinburgh Festival um, and then in September I'm going to be out doing a few more shows which have not been announced yet.